Hello, my dearest science nerds and welcome to my channel Let's Chemistry. Good news! We have got in our possession a little jar of catechol, also known as pyrocatechol. Many things could be made from this interesting reagent, but today we will try to synthesize 1,3-benzodioxyl or otherwise 1,2-methylenedioxybenzene using methylenation. The catechol methylenation reaction type is SN2. We have covered this type of reactions in our previous video, where we prepared allyl bromide. The reaction mechanism in case of using diiodomethane looks like following. The final product is methylenedioxybenzene, 1,3-benzodioxyl, that is methylenated catechol. Most of the procedures described in the literature require phase transfer catalysts to achieve significant yields. But I have found a few methods promising high yields without implicating exotic and pricey reagents. At first, we will give a try to the method described by Ephesian on the Science Madness Forum involving base-catalyzed catechol methylenation, where catechol and sodium hydroxide are added portion by portion to a stirred methylene chloride solution in DMSO. In this video we tried a third scale of the reaction which we believed to be a relatively small scale. What could have gone wrong, but it turned out to be too early to experiment with such quantities for the first time. So, a 3 necked 1 liter, the round bottom flask was charged with 33 milliliters of dichloromethane and 166 milliliters of DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. We have discussed in our previous video where to get and how to purify the DMSO solvent. As you can see flask is equipped with a small but efficient condenser, thermometer, and stir bar. We lowered the flask to the oil bath and started heating and stirring. The flask must be heated to 120 degrees Celsius and the temperature maintained for 2 hours. We weighed out 36.66 grams of catechol, 28.33 grams of sodium hydroxide. According to the procedure, the catechol and sodium hydroxide should be added portion by portion while the solution of dichloromethane is heated. Unfortunately, in the procedure, the addition rate's not clearly defined. We were expecting the dichloromethane to start to boil at around 40 degrees and we were in rush to finish the addition of catechol and the base. But, interestingly, it turned out the DCM boiling temperature as a solution in DMSO is much higher, somewhere near 100 degrees Celsius. So, there is plenty of time and the addition rate must be much slower. An additional 8.3 milliliters of DCM is added to rinse down the glass funnel. The addition took us 10 minutes, which turned out to be too fast. The temperature continues to rise and liquid in the flask takes greenish tint, as it is described in the procedure. We have taken it as a good sign. After reaching 100 degrees Celsius by the reaction mixture, a violent boiling has started. The condenser cannot handle all the vapors. We have underestimated the necessity of a big condenser and as a result, we have lost some DCM. Just in case, to compensate for the loss, we add 2 milliliters of DCM. We have been maintaining the temperature for 2 hours as described, despite the smaller scale. We have removed the thermometer and have changed setup for simple distillation. We are going to steam distill the product from the reaction mixture. We are going to add 300 milliliters of water, but water addition has caused a violent boiling so we have decided to add a half portion at first and the rest after 10 minutes. mixture in the flask starts to foam but it remains under control. Distillation continued for two hours. Just a small portion of azeotrope came over. The liquid in the receiving flask is separated in two phases. To maximize extraction, we have extracted the water phase with 30 milliliters of DCM. The crude yield is unexpectedly low. We continue with work up. Having the crude product washed at first, 
with a 5% sodium hydroxide solution to destroy phenolic side products. After we wash it twice, with distilled water, water washes have formed nasty emulsions and took a long time to separate. After drying on anhydrous calcium carbonate, I have decided to evaporate the DCM on the hot plate and monitor the temperature of the product during evaporation. Benzodioxal boils at 179 degrees Celsius but it must be distilled under reduced pressure as it can decompose at near boiling temperatures. We are not going to distill, we just need to evaporate the DCM. So, heating under 100 degrees should not harm. After evaporation, we have got just 6.144 grams of oily liquid. We were expecting more than 20 grams yield from a successful run. After analysis of our experiment, the most obvious reasons for this failure were the following. Sodium hydroxide must be powdered before addition. Unfortunately, I have learned this somewhere on the internet when it was too late. Secondly, the addition rate must be much slower, with smaller portions. The flask must be equipped with bigger efficient condenser. The steam distillation must be conducted more efficiently by passing steam from the external steam generator setup. Next time, I hope, we will try not to be as lazy and evaporate the solvent under reduced pressure. See you guys, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.